What's going on everyone? This is Kevin with Kind Peace Carpentry. We're going to jump right into this review on the Ortor Laser Master 3. The first test I'm going to do is to test the air assist. This air assist was not designed for laser use. It's for small aquariums. It's super quiet, but it hardly puts out any air at all. So I really wanted to see before I started testing if it made a difference and that would dictate if I would use it for the remainder of the experiments. So all I'm doing is some simple text. Throughout this entire review, I'm, I'm going to be using the Lightburn software. So the, the first test is just going to be running some simple text with the Air Assist and without, and we'll see what kind of effects we get. One of the cool things about this Ortor Laser Master 3 is that it comes with built-in Air Assist ports. So all you have to do is just plug the hose right into the top and it channels that air right at the tip of the laser where it needs to be. So you can tell the results here with air definitely produces a darker burn. Disregard that third line. It had different grains in the wood that was producing different effects. So those top two lines are what you want to focus on. So I'll definitely be using the air for the remainder of these experiments. The next test I'm going to do is a material test. I'm going to do it on three different materials. I'm going to use pine, red oak, and walnut. I messed around with this machine a little bit before, so I got a general idea of you know what the minimum and maximum settings should be. Some of you might notice I had everything in inches. That's just how I've always run my lasers. I do woodworking the majority of the time, not just laser stuff. So it just for me personally, I understand the settings a lot more in inches per minute versus millimeters per minute or millimeters per second. And here's what the pine looks like. Next up is going to be the red oak, followed by the walnut. And here's the three materials next to each other. The settings were the same for all of them, just different materials. I added the conversion in there from inches per minute to millimeters per minute. You can see the slowest, 1,270, and the fastest, 17,780. The Ortor Laser Master 3 advertises it can go 20,000 millimeters a minute, so that wasn't even the fastest setting I could have done. The next thing we're going to do is see how well this laser can cut through quarter inch pine. I don't have a cut mat, so I had to use something else to hold the material up off the surface. It's important to do that because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of excess charring on the back side of the material. So that's why I have those two carpenter pencils down on either side. So there's some space on the back side for the laser to pass through. I'm doing the same test three times, but just adding a pass in there. So the furthest left is one pass, the center is two passes, and the furthest right is three passes. And again, this is all done on quarter inch pine. And here are the results. Quarter inch pine, which is 6.4 millimeters. You can see the speeds are on the left. Everything was done at 100% power. So you can see here in a single pass, moving at both two and three inches a minute, the laser was able to cut through quarter inch pine. Next, we're bumping right up to half inch pine, 12.7 millimeter. We're gonna run the same exact test. I had to stop this test halfway through because the laser was moving too slow and the material was too thick and it actually started lighting it on fire. So instead of continuing, I'm just going to do a different test to see how thick a material we can cut through with this laser. So I've got the machine set to do three passes moving four inches a minute, which is 101.6 millimeters a minute. And it's at 95% power. And you can see here that was able to punch right through the half inch pine. Next up, we're going up to three quarter inch thick pine, which is 19 millimeter. And we're moving it at four inches per minute. And we're gonna do five passes. What you're seeing here is the actual speed. This isn't sped up or slowed down at all. You can see here, it didn't quite make it all the way through. 
even when I tried to push on it, that circle just didn't pop out, so I would call this a fail. I'm gonna run it again, I'm gonna slow it down, bring it down to three inches a minute, and do six passes. You can see here, even at that slower speed and additional pass, it still didn't get all the way through. I'm sure it could if I had a better air assist or ran it over and over, but I just don't think it's applicable for this machine to cut through three quarter inch thick material. After doing all that testing, I had a pretty good idea of the capabilities of this machine, so I wanna jump right into making actual projects and kind of exploring the versatility of a piece of equipment like this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is experiment with cutting out different uh, letters out of different material and stacking it to give a cool 3D effect. So here you can see I have two different sets of letters. One is light, made out of pine. One is dark, made out of black walnut. And I just wanted to get a good visual of what it would look like having light on top, dark on the bottom, or dark on top, light on the bottom. So from that little experiment, I decided what I wanted to do was have a black background with light colored letters on top. So I'm gonna cut out the first set, spray paint it black, and then leave the second set, the natural color of the plywood, and mount that on top. So you can see here by me super gluing these two layers together, it gives a pretty cool 3D effect. Now I'm just using a piece of scrap wood as a spacer so I can get even alignment on the letters as I super glue those into this uh, simple rustic frame that I built. And here's the finished sign. You can see this double layered text technique is pretty sweet. I'll definitely be using it again in the future for other projects. The next thing I did is jumped on makercase.com to design a finger jointed or box jointed box that I could download the file, throw it right into Lightburn and uh, cut this box out. There is some fine tuning you need to do with the settings, but what you're seeing here was my first attempt and it fit together well enough for an experiment. If I was to mass produce these and actually use them for a project, I could probably tighten up the tolerances a little bit more. The next project I'm gonna do is actually for my mom. Her birthday's coming up and she's getting more and more grandkids as the years go by and the family's growing. So I figured she would really like to have some type of family tree where she can add little hearts with names on it and I'll make her a couple extra ones and as the years go by and she gathers up more and more grandkids she can add to the family tree here. So here I'm just gluing the letters on. Another cool technique you can do when you're doing text like this is you add a little spacer block on the back of all these letters. As you can see some of them like the M for example overlap with the trunk of the tree so the rest of the letters have to have that same standoff so I achieved that by just gluing a thin strip of plywood on the back of each letter and it gives a pretty cool 3D effect. The next project I'm going to do is a small monogram cutting board. It could be a coaster, it could be a small piece of wall art. I really just wanted to highlight a technique that I don't see a lot of people use. I use this technique almost every time I make a plaque with text or I do a logo and it gives a really cool effect and nice crisp edges. What you want to do is after you run your fill layer, you want to come back and program a second layer, a line layer, and it's just going to come around and burn a crisp edge around the perimeter of your design. The settings I'm using on the fill layer is going to be 350 inches a minute, which is 8,890 millimeters a minute at 100% power. Line interval is 0 0.007 inches, which is 0.18 millimeter. The second pass on the line layer is going to be at 100 inches a minute, which is 2,540 millimeters, and that's at 90% power. Total time for this piece was 8 minutes, 36 seconds. The next thing I want to try to do is some wooden inlays. So I cut two of the same images out on two different types of wood at relatively the same thickness. I then glued those pieces to a thicker piece of the same wood and then just switched the colors around and glued them in. Once they dried, it was as simple as sanding them down flush and putting some clear coat on it and they turned out pretty cool. Next up, I'm gonna laser engrave USMC on this small ashtray that I made. I'm gonna run it pretty quick at 500 inches a minute, 
which is 12,700 millimeters a minute. The whole burn only took a minute 13 seconds and as you can see it turned out pretty dark. It was a good burn. Now I'm going to start messing around with the rotary attachment that Ortor sent me. I didn't do too much research on how to properly calibrate it. I was just doing some guess and check. So you can see here my first attempt laser engraving this stainless steel koozie resulted in the image being elongated. So I just had to mess around with some of the settings until I got it dialed in and calibrated how I needed it to. Where you see here where it says 50 millimeters per rotation, this is the number you need to change. I had to go up and down a couple times until I got it right where I wanted it. The number I landed on was 52 millimeters per rotation and that worked out just fine. You can see the details amazing on here. I went inside to my kitchen to see what else I had that I could laser engrave on the rotary attachment. I grabbed a coffee mug to see if that would work and it turned out pretty cool. You will notice though, um, the bottom portion of the design is not as dark and that's because the coffee cup isn't a perfect cylinder. The top part is whiter than the bottom. So as it got towards the bottom of the design, the laser wasn't as focused. I could have mitigated this had I put shims on the right side of the rotary attachment to level it out. Next up, I'm gonna try some glass. I've never done glass before, but I've watched a few videos on it and what they tell you you need to do is put some black spray paint on there. If you don't, the laser just passes right through the glass because it doesn't have anything to interact with. So by applying some black spray paint on it, that laser hits the black and then will actually etch into the glass. Then all you need to do is use some lacquer thinner and wipe the paint off. It comes off pretty easily. Overall, I've been super impressed with the performance and capabilities of this laser. It's going to save me a lot of time and increase the efficiencies in my shop with the projects that I get from people. If you're interested in buying the Ortor Laser Master 3, I'm going to have affiliate links down in the description below the video. You can click those. It'll take you right to the site where you can purchase it. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'm here to help however I can. Thanks for watching.